Hello YouTube. Welcome to Death Free Cars. Is your GPS navigation unit stuck on this screen? Does it make noises while it's on this screen? Does the DVD try to insert and eject? Well, it's most likely that the rollers are dirty in the DVD drive. And in this video, I will show you how to clean it and to repair it so that this does not happen and you can continue the operation and the normal use of your GPS navigation. This applies to Toyota model E7007 uh, JBL navigation unit all the way up to the model E7013 uh, GPS navigation unit made by JBL for a Toyota uh, premium product, Toyota and Lexus vehicles. This could also apply to other uh, navigation uh, units with a DVD drive. So please follow along. Hi YouTube, this is Joe with Debt Free Cars. I have here a Toyota GPS navigation unit taken apart. Toyota GPS navigation JBL uh, unit model E7013. Uh, but it, it, this applies to models uh, E7007 through E7013. What happens is a DVD disc fails to either insert or eject out of the tray. So what I'm gonna show you is how to repair that with a quick cleaning of the rollers. Um, very simple, takes about 30 minutes, but you do have to take apart the unit. So I have the unit here, it's taken apart. If you wanna see some more details on how to take the unit down to this part, uh, fault, uh, please take a look at my other videos. Uh, also be sure to subscribe and uh, and uh, subscribe and thumbs up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so once you get to this point, you have the, the top side and back panels removed, and then the display screen is taken off of the rails. So then now what you have to do is actually remove the ribbon cable that's connecting the DVD drive. So there's actually a CD drive and then a DVD drive and then the main board below. So the first thing is to actually take out the ribbon cable of the CD drive and you would go ahead and just pull these black tabs out here and then lift the, rib, the, the ribbon cable holder and pull it out. Now this still has a little bit of adhesive on this side, so gently just pull it down until it releases from both the CD drive and the DVD drive so that we have a little bit of clearance to, um, to, to uh, remove the drive. So the top CD, C CD changer, it's a four disc CD changer, this particular model is held in by one central screw right in the center there. So go ahead and remove that. Once you remove the screw in the rear, this unit come, does come a little loose. So flip it to the front where the discs go into the machine and remove the ribbon cables that attach here. What you want to do is you want to pop this ribbon cable up towards the face. There's actually a, 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 a wire connection, a, a, um, a connector underneath. Okay, and then this thing, this is all adhesived. So just gently pry this up, remove it from the glue. So once you remove this, there's a little bit of glue. Once that glue is removed, this the CD changer for this CD changer slides right out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set this aside. So there's no problem in this one. There's no problem in this one, this unit. I wanna take a good look here. There's some markings there. This seems to be okay. But one of the problems with these units is that if the DVD map drive does not work, or if you don't have a DVD map, um, it actually does not turn the unit on for some reason. So it's really critical to actually repair this DVD drive. Next step is there's actually one screw right here to remove the DVD drive.
and then this DVD drive gently slides forward and there is a ribbon cable underneath. There's a ribbon cable underneath. You can either detach it from the face of the unit, which is much easier to get to, or you could detach it from the underside of the DVD unit. So we'll go ahead and just de detach it from this side. There's a plastic clip that actually flips down. Just flips down and then it pops out like this. Super easy, pretty easy, I think so. So here's the DVD unit, okay. DVD unit, okay. This is the main board unit, so we'll go ahead and set this aside. Okay. Okay, we'll take a look at this. Okay, so step up with step one with the DVD unit. Remove the mount the uh, bracket screws that support the uh, DVD drive. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. The black ones. Okay, so once you remove the screws, these screws, the, the bracket in the back comes off. The bracket in the front also comes off, but it's attached to this ribbon cable. So I just go ahead and leave the ribbon cable. It doesn't get too much into the way. Next thing you do is you want to take these two silver screws out and then these this tape you want to peel back this black tape that holds the top cover once you get open open that up then we could get access to the rollers okay take apart the two take out the two silver screws in the front the small ones pull back the black tape here left and right and this cover should gently come off okay There's actually a little spring right here that you want to make sure you don't lose. So we'll go ahead and unlatch that screw, that, that I'm sorry, spring. And you can tell this, these are the rollers that are causing a problem. And then on the top side, there's also these roller uh, pressure pressure system that it goes, pushes up against the rollers. So this, the way this, so the way this device works is you insert the DVD here you insert it and then it should, the rollers actually, the, the, the rollers in the center, you see these are actually loose, but it actually, the, the, the rollers towards the end are actually the fixed rollers, the rubber rollers. You'll see when you get to your unit. So this unit goes through here and then once it gets about here, this is when the permanent rollers take over it and insert the DVD completely. So when these rollers on the end get dirty, the DVD doesn't insert completely. And it, you get that stall where the, uh, where the DVD just, tries to insert and eject constantly and the display asks you to insert a DVD. Okay, so once you get to this point, what you wanna do is you wanna clean the rollers out. I use a little bit of rubbing alcohol or 70% alcohol here, a little towel, and then just go ahead and clean the top layer as much as you can without rotating it. And then I'll show you how to rotate it. So clean both sides, and then I'll show you how to rotate the rollers so that you get to the other side of the rollers. Okay, so I kid you not, this is how much dirt that came off of these rollers. This is just one sided roller. I'll show you how to turn the rotors manually to get to the other side. Okay, so the way you wanna rotate these rollers, these rollers is that if you look, there's a gear and it connects to another gear and then it actually connects to this warm gear, which is a green warm gear. So if you actually push along the warm gear on the top here, it won't rotate, okay? It will not rotate, don't do that. So what you want to do is you want to lift this up a little bit and actually rotate below the warm gear right here. And then just slowly rotate it with your little bit by little bit. And then it causes this item to rotate. And you can tell it kind of rotated to the clean, the dirtier part again. So we'll go ahead and just clean this off like this. Okay. On both sides. So the alcohol really does a good job in softening up the rubber as well. So get as much as you can. And we'll do what? Okay. And then we just rotate this a little more and get it a little bit cleaner. Make sure you rotate in the same direction so you know where you left off at.
Okay, so you can also use a little Q-tip or something maybe that doesn't shed as much as what I'm using here. Okay, so go ahead and rotate it. And if you think you have most of it, take a good look. Okay, I'm gonna do a little more. So this is a warm gear and it actually rotates very slowly as you can imagine. But it's actually much better than if you just forced it or did it another way. So I'm gonna clean up some of the little dark spots here. I can't believe how much dirt this came off of. Came off of this thing. So I would just go ahead and clean some of the residual areas, maybe get some air blast in here. So, you know, during your, your cleaning, you might have shifted the drive a little bit. So just go ahead and press this drive back into the, into the base foundation. So it basically has these rubber isolators that they sit on. So sometimes they come off. So just... Okay, push these isolators in. This this uh, DVD top holder sometimes slides off. So what you wanna do is you wanna slide this back on here. There's two pivots here. You just slide it over. And uh, put the lid back on and you should be ready to go. Just wanna show you, when you put this lid on, make sure the tape is pulled back on both sides. And then this spring also needs to go back so that the DVD lift mechanism works. And of course this, this uh, cover goes from the back side first, goes into a little slot. And then it pushes forward, make sure the tape gets back on top on both sides. And then it Gently presses in on top. Two silver screws go on top first, and then the black screws with the brackets. So one silver screw here. Another tiny silver screw here. Okay. And then the rest of the procedure should be the reverse of taking apart. All right, thank you. Just once again, uh, remember to subscribe or thumbs up this video if, you, if, it, if it helped you. And um, if you also have a uh, Toyota GPS E7007, 7008, or 7009. I also have another video on how to replace the um, power auxiliary bore causing uh, massive failures in some of these GPS systems. There's a link also to where you can purchase the replacement unit. Um, it uh, applies to uh, late, uh, early 2006 through 2010 Toyota Siennas and Sequoias with uh, very similar GPS systems, GPS navigation units made by JBL. Okay, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Debt Free Cars. Stay out of debt, pay cash for cars. Debt Free Cars is here to help. Please subscribe.